Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy. Uh, with another video today, we're looking at, uh, yes, it's true, the very desirable, yet very hard to find, Daisy model, or excuse me, Daisy number 111, model 40, Red Rider Carbine. This is a 1946 post-war production unit. Uh, and we'll explain to you how we came to that decision in just a moment, but you'll have to look at this because this little dent down here is the Fred Harmon signature. And this one, you can actually read Fred's name as opposed to just being a blob mashed into a bit of wood. I'm, I'm always impressed when I can get the uh, buttstock label to actually say Fred. You can see it clearly and plainly. And it's good old Red Rider with his lariat spelling out his name. So uh, this particular gun came in from one of our subscribers in Florida, and it is in fact a Legacy Daisy. And I am of the opinion that Legacy Daisies are the very best Daisies uh, because the uh, owner's father owned this gun, and she is getting it prepared to hand down to grandsons. So sent it to me and told me she did not want it resto modded or hot rodded or jazzed up in any way, shape, form, or fashion, but to see if I could do something about the relatively weak shooting that it's currently having. Chronograph's telling me he's running about 175, so it's probably a combination of a dirty cylinder or worn seals. Uh, we will take that apart and get this corrected so the gun's hopefully back around the 300 plus foot a second range. Fairly simple job to do, not a lot of fabrication. What I wanted to cover with you on this gun is, how do we say it's a 1946 post-war gun? Well, the biggest single clue is the fact that it's got a cast aluminum lever. Um, the pre-war guns were cast iron levers, and they are radically different looking. Now, this gun obviously has been in, somebody's been into it before because on the lever mounting bolt, you see the proper type of bolt attachment. This is a standard slot. Uh, but when you take a look back here on the stock bolt and the trigger bolt, you'll notice that they are... Uh, Phillips heads. And when we flip up the top, that is not the correct bolt. Uh, it is the correct style of bolt. Uh, it's a little bit large. That's aftermarket. came from someplace else. Uh, if we take a look at the receiver, you'll notice there's a fair amount of goo here. Uh, we'll do some stuff to get the chunkiness out, but the uh, owner's wishes are to not modify the surface unnecessarily. So what we'll do is, if you run your finger across this right now, you hear that noise. Oh, that's rust. Oh, that's not good. It feels bad. Over here, oh, look at that. There's nothing. You can hardly hear a thing, and it feels so smooth. So we're going to make this smooth like that. We'll do that by being very, very, very careful with some 4X steel wool and a lot of patient rubbing. Now, up here at the spring anchor, you'll notice the uh, spring anchor in the gun is an old-style spring anchor. It has that very, design, very defined U-shape where it dips down into the receiver as opposed to a, more of a bell shape that the later spring anchors have. And while we're back here, let's take a peek at this rear sight. It's actually a stepped buckhorn. If you'll notice, there are two distinct levels, uh, and the gun sights that Daisy had later on did not have that feature. I've always liked those because it was kind of, it's kind of a cheap way to throw an elevation on. And let's take a look at our roll stamp because that's always important. There we have Daisy Red Rider. Now I'm going to roll it up just a little bit so you can read the important stuff. There we have it. Ooh, a number 111 Model 40. And the most important bit of info, Plymouth, Michigan. This is an early Daisy. Too early to have a registered number. Now we'll travel down the barrel just a bit. Here you can see where the gun's had a lot of contact with a hand because it's rusty and the blue is gone. But now we're acquiring what is called, in the trades, patina. And that's uh, basically just a rust blue process that happens with guns over time. We move down to the barrel proper. You can see that there's still some bluing left on the fake magazine tube. But it's a chunky little puppy. You know, so this is all going to have to go away. See, you can take it off with your thumbnail. But you don't want to be more aggressive than that because you don't want to scar the wood. You want that, that underlying brown color to stay put. Somebody got a little heavy with a, uh, a scratch there somewhere. I don't know if we can blend that or not, but we'll try. And on back. The uh, bottle cap in the gun is in excellent shape. Uh, the seam is in good shape. This, the uh, retainer spring is present, so we'll leave that there. And like I said, the gun does shoot about 177, so it's not in terrible, terrible shape in terms of compression. But it is awful gunky and awful junky inside, because when you pull the trigger, you can hear it just go poofed. It's, it's not very happy right now. So we'll take it apart, clean it up, get it happy. 
and get it shined up, spiffed up, and on its way back to Florida so that it can get ready to find a new home with the grandsons or great-grandsons of the original owners, of the original owner. And uh, I'll feel like we've done our job here at Restomod when that happens. Once again, Legacy Daisies are the best. A 11140, I think, is the best Red Rider they ever made. And that's all we've got today for you kids. This is Shane Bruce with Restomod Daisy, signing off.